I'm Andrew Whitehead, an independent developer working with Government of British Columbia in Digital Trust Services. Um, this is going to be a session on building the next generation of Aries agents. So, hello, thanks for coming out. Um, so, a quick in introduction to the work we've been doing at BC Gov. Aries Cloud Agent Python is something we've been working on for, I guess, two to three years now. It is a sort of agent and agent framework written in Python for developing Aries agents. It lets you hook up a con controller written in your preferred language to communicate with the agent over a REST protocol. Uh, we use it ourselves to issue credentials to the org book, which acts as a holder of credentials. Uh, those credentials are business registrations for the province of BC, as well as related credentials having to do with um, certifications, we, we can put credentials in there, such as uh, whether a business has been registered as a green organization. Um, a lot of what we do has been based on Hyperledger Indie, especially the non-creds credential supports, which relies on an Indie node ledger, an identity ledger, which is permissioned and doesn't involve any mining. We don't store any credentials on the ledger. They're only communicated peer to peer. We encourage um, basically single use DIDCOM connections for that. And the non-creds credentials have support for revocation where the registry is essentially published to the ledger, um, which allows, it's one of many measures taken to avoid exposing any details about the holder of a credential unintentionally. So Akapai, um, you see we've been around a lot, it's quite popular. Um, in terms of contributors and implementations. A lot of people are taking this framework and using it to build their own applications. And um, we've started to run into some limitations of Vindy SDK for our own use. Um, our particular deployment runs on OpenShift and we like to have several agent pods running, all issuing from a shared wallet, um, or in the case of the org book, receiving and storing to a shared wallet. And um, because of the architecture of the SDK where everything is bundled together, you've got your ledger client, you've got the wallet handling, and you've got the credential operations. Um, sometimes we were finding that our performance was limited by that, but also the, the flexibility of those components was a bit more limited. So we've been on about a year project, I think, of uh, separating some of this functionality into what we call the shared components. And I'll introduce some of those components and how we plan to use them and make them more available uh, more convenient for others to use as well. So our um, Hyperledger repositories, apart from Akapai itself, there's the Indie Shared RS repository, which contains Indie Credx, Indie Utils. There's Indie WQL in there. These are Rust crates, so fairly low level um, for most implementers, but we take these components and, and add language wrappers on them. So at the moment, Indie Credits is available for Python as well. Indie VDR, 
is the Ledger client library. And Aries Ascar is our sort of generic storage backend, which is not very opinionated about what you store in there, but uh, can be used to develop specialized wallets. There's a few links there below if you need to explore the projects. Otherwise, I think you can just hit up Hyperledger on GitHub and, and search for us. All of these are tagged as at least Aries. <laughs> um, part of our motivation comes from the set of standards behind AIP 2.0. This is the, the Aries interop profile. So at the moment, the IP 1.0 is in effect. There are, um, I don't know how many implementers, I think at least a dozen now, that are conformant with the IP 1.0 to different levels, which means they can interop with each other. Um, the first requirement there is generally peer connection establishment. For AIP 2.0, the um, did exchange protocol has been introduced. This replaces the earlier connections protocol. Um, the out of band protocol also kind of spun out of that effort. So connection invitations are now represented as out of band messages as well as certain other kinds of requests. So a connectionless presentation request or connectionless uh, credential offer is possible using that pro protocol. And we have newer, newer re revisions of the protocols used to exchange credentials, um, either to issue new credentials to a holder or to present uh, indie credentials to a verifier. Uh, as well as the new BBS plus credentials, which are being introduced now. Um, and one point that, that isn't listed here is uh, the DIDCOM v2 envelope formats. So that's going to be a big part of supporting AIP 2.0 as well. As, um, the envelope format has changed. It's become a little more standard in terms of um, being a JWE with, with uh, more widely implemented encryption algorithms. So the first uh, project contributed to Hyperledger was Indie VDR, I mean, as part of this effort, the uh, separation of the, the shared components. Indie VDR is directly adapted from uh, in the SDK code. So just, just pulling out the ledger client code, which uses uh, zero MQ to connect to the verifier nodes of uh, your Indie SK ledger, be it a uh, sovereign testnet, mainnet, or a local ledger instance. Um, we use Vaughn Network mostly for that to boot up a quick development ledger on your local machine. So in DVDR lets you read and write to the ledger, um, written in Rust, part of the code adaptation meant uh, moving to async in there. And it uh, has language wrappers written for Python, Go, and Node.js. Python is most complete there. Um, Go is, I think, pretty close. It might be missing one or two request types, and Node.js is more under development. There's also, also an FFI uh, foreign function wrapper, so you can call it directly from C if you desired. And IndieVDR includes a basic uh, REST proxy. It's called IndieVDR proxy, and you can just um, point that at a Indie node Genesis file, run the executable, and it provides a REST interface to read and write from that ledger. We are also using Indie VDR directly in Indie node monitor and Indie tail server now. 
um, as opposed to using in DSDK there, because all they really needed to do was connect to a ledger. Under in DSDK, you'd have to uh, create a wallet before you could load the Genesis file, set up the pool, and uh, start interacting with the ledger. So it gives us a little more freedom there. And uh, if any additional features are added, you can upgrade that component independently or not, depending on what your needs are. IndieCredX was the second uh, fork of this development. This was also extracted basically directly from IndieSDK. Um, some adjustments to the API. This provides the non-creds uh, credential handling. It's everything you need really to be uh, an issuer holder or verify verifier of non-creds credentials. These use um, CL signatures and they're inherently tied really to Indie node ledger instances, because that's where you will find the schemas and cred defs, uh, revocation registry definitions and entries all published, as well as the um, key information about the issuer of credentials. IndieCredX also has a Python wrapper and foreign function interface. The major difference here is that the, the methods as called will directly take um, the credential cryptographic inputs. Really. So uh, you're not giving it a pointer to something in the wallet to go and look up. You are going to your wallet, fetching the objects that it needs and passing them into the anoncreds methods. Um, that obviously takes some careful operation to avoid leaking those objects, but we trust you to do that on your own. In general, you want to use a framework for these things anyway. So Akapai does it in a way where uh, the buffers are generally passed around with uh, zero copying into memory managed by Python itself. So the buffers are always zeroed once they are released. Um, IndieCredX doesn't do any threading itself internally because it tends to be CPU intensive, uh, especially things like generating signatures or creating a new revocation registry. So it leaves it up to the caller how many threads they, they'd like to run to perform these operations. Um, when we use it in Akapai, for instance, we're running in an async framework. So we tend to use a thread pool for all of these operations. And the most recent component that we've introduced is Aries Ascar. That is sort of lightly based on the design of, of the Indie wallet, but it doesn't really share any genetic information. The uh, 0.2 release of Ascar is coming out shortly. There, there's been several RCs there, and that introduces the new Ascar crypto crate. That does, well, it offers um, generation and representation of all the key types uh, that we need at the moment for an Aries agent. So there's everything from cha-cha uh, encryption, various AES, CM key wrapping, wrapping. Um, ED25519, of course, X25519. And there's basic BLS key creation that will be updated soon, as well as um, the, the addition of BBS uh, signatures. At the moment, we use the Matter Global um, FFI BBS signatures uh, Python wrapper for 
for the BBS signature generation, but that will be moving into Ascar as well. Um, Ascar Crypto itself supports uh, the ECDHES and ECDH1PU um, JWE encryption algorithms up to the latest drafts, as well as a generic um, encrypted key value storage internally that looks a lot like how the Indie Wallet stores records in that there's just a large items table um, if you're using normal database tools to browse the database, you, you can't really discern anything. All of the records are encrypted there. Um, it's, uh, it allows searching for, for these records by encrypted or unencrypted tags as well, which is the primary way of finding information once you've, you've stored it in the encrypted storage. There are SQLite and Postgres storage backends, much like in the SDK at the moment. Uh, both are built in, so it's not a, a separate plugin for Postgres. We'll likely be adding more storage backends there as we go along. And at the moment, there's only a Python wrapper and foreign function interface. Um, love to have additional language wrappers for Haskar here. And um, as I mentioned later on, Ascar uh, Crypto is designed in, in particular to be used in isolation. So if you don't need the storage functionality, you can still use all of the key handling and uh, encryption operations there. So a primary goal of this project was reusability. We wanted each of these components to be useful on their own. Um, and for implementers that didn't need all of the functionality, they could just pull in one or two of these components. As we go along, we, we may or may not be focusing on the non-creds credentials, for instance. We may be doing more BBS plus credentials, which uh, could obviate the need for indie cred acts there. Um, so both IndieVDR and IndieCredX allow you to perform these operations without a wallet, which was a primary restriction of Indie SDK. And we're aiming to support multiple language wrappers so that the same tools can be used, whether you're building a framework, a framework in Go or JavaScript or Python, as we are. Ask our crypto, the, the core functionality in Aries Ascar is no standard compatible at the moment. So should be able to target embedded hardware, although nobody's tried that yet. And it should be compatible for WASM as well. Although again, that's a, a, an experiment that hasn't been tried. And that uh, crate on its own gets you a long way to supporting Didcom, Didcom V2. It doesn't do the JWE construction and, and deconstruction, but it gives you all of the encryption algorithms needed. Um, you can also generate your BLS keys for doing BBS plus signatures. And shortly that, that will be integrated more directly. So now that we have these three components, the next step is re-architecting Aries Cloud Agent Python a bit so that uh, users of the framework can switch from Indie SDK to the new components. Uh, there is a shared components branch, if you'd like to check it out, that will be merged Week or two. in preparation for a 0 0.7 release of Akapai where you can try out the new backend experimentally. So each of these components has a Python wrapper and they're installed from PyPy um, as wheel packages because the core of each of these is, is a shared library written in Rust. Akapai uses dependency injection, which 
means that in general, um, the protocol handlers are highly reusable. They don't need to know whether you're tar whether you're running in the SDK behind the scenes or whether you're running the new shared components. So in general, it, it hasn't been that difficult to add support for the new components. We just change which implementations get injected for the various interfaces that the um, protocol and service handlers uh, request. So um, using the new backend, you, you request the Indie Ledger base interface, and you may get back an Indie VDR Ledger implementation, as opposed to an Indie SDK Ledger implementation. There are Indie CredX issuer, holder, and verifier implementations. There's the Ascar storage implementation of base storage and the Ascar wallet implementation of base wallet, as well as um, for 0 0.6, we introduced the concept of profiles, which is um, roughly, roughly corresponds to an identity, which may or may not correspond to an entire wallet. Profiles also have sessions, which introduce uh, some basic transaction management. We, as we go on, we'll be introducing more support for transactions in protocol handlers to make sure that um, logically grouped operations all proceed within a transaction. And um, a, a large part of the reason we were able to switch these backends as well is the, the high rate of unit test coverage in Akapai. So every PR goes through, I think about 1200 unit tests at the moment. We have over 98% code coverage and we don't intend to change that with the new backends. But um, for instance, just, just taking all of the existing wallet and storage tests and running them against the new backends goes a long way to knowing that we can just plug those in and they will work equivalently to India SDK there. Um, we also require a fairly stringent um, a code formatting of any contributed code so that our diffs aren't full of uh, changes just due to IDEs reformatting things. So current status, um, all of these packages are published currently for X, I should say it's X86, 64. Um, additional platforms would be another um, important area of development. We, we just need to work on the CI, which all runs on GitHub at the moment to publish those additional platforms. You can check out shared components very soon. You can check out Akapai 0.7, where all you need to add is wallet type Ascar and, well, and make sure you've installed the requirements. Um, there's a separate requirements file for that, or you can install Akapai with the Ascar uh, feature flag. Should support all of the same protocols that it does now. And very soon you'll be able to take your Indie SDK wallet and run a script to migrate it to a uh, Aries Ascar wallet. I um, will stop for a second there to see if anybody had questions. See, we've only got five more minutes. Um, nobody's posted anything, so, so oh. Yes, uh, so Jakub Kochi was asking, um, does uh, base storage represent the non-secrets part of Indie SDK? Yeah, yeah essentially that, that, that is, is the parallel. Um, Ascar storage is just a generic interface for fetching and retrieving records that are identified by a category and a name and are stored encrypted. The Ascar wallet interface provides more key management, um, things like signing with a key and verifying with a key and uh, management of your DIDs in the wallet. 
Um, Philip Ross is asking, can I use only some of the new components or do I need to switch completely? So within Akapai, it's, uh, there's only the one flag. If you're using an Ascar wallet, then you're using NDBDR to connect to the ledger and you're using ND CredX uh, for your credential management. Um, that's because we can't really take ND SDK and just use it for credentials. You, you kind of need to use it for everything. But the components themselves are independent at the moment, Python packages, um, and there's nothing stopping you from using them in isolation. That I know of. <laughs> um, I should mention on this slide that documentation is still lacking. I need to publish documentation for the, the Python APIs. The, the Rust crates generally are uh, fully documented, I believe. All the uh, structures and methods have at least uh, some description of what they do. <laughs> but uh, we need proper um, fleshed out readmes, quick start guides, and um, documentation of the wrappers as well. Um, Dan Yamamoto is asking uh, if I could elaborate on BBS plus support and the canon canonicalization listed here. Um, I threw that in actually based on some comments by Brent Zendel at Evernim that they're looking at a, a message canonicalization format based on Microsoft Spartan, I believe. And I'm still looking for more information on that actually. Um, the 2021 signature suite is, as far as I know, currently a set of notes by Mike Lauder. So we're, we're following that and looking to contribute as well. We're, we've been doing a lot of work on BBS plus credential revocation at the moment, which seemed like a, a big gap as far as our usage is concerned. And I think we have a good solution there, which will be published publicizing shortly. Um, as well as our, our other future plans, we, we'd love to see uptake of these components in existing frameworks. Didcom RS, for instance, I, I've seen um, that's under the uh, diff banner. Um, I'm going to re-implement some of the things that are in uh, Ask Our Crypto, and it could easily use the EC, ECDH1PU implementation there. Uh, Vaughn Network as well will be switching to NDVDR. I've actually had a branch that, that switched over to that for quite some time, but it hasn't become the main branch yet. Uh, I think we've only got about a minute left here. Yep. So if there aren't any more questions, I'll wrap it up there, I think. Thank you very much. Um, of course, you can look us up on GitHub if, if you'd like to contribute. Watch for the new releases of Akapai if you'd like to test the code out yourself. And uh, we're thankful for any contributions. Everything we do is open source. So we'll uh, rise all boats together, right? <laughs> Thanks very much.